Hello, everyone. I didn't want you to think that I had fallen off of the Flat Earth wagon, so today's video is called Flat Earth and the End Times. I'm not going to be giving you any proofs about the Flat Earth today, but I want to remind you of the many good videos that are out there. I especially recommend those that are done by Rob Skiba. For me, the flat earth has become self-evident. When you begin to really watch things and look at things, it really doesn't make sense that we're on a spinning globe that is hurtling through space at something like 67,000 miles per hour or more, um, and that is moving in so many different ways. And you can go to different videos to understand what I just said. You know, we couldn't have the very soft summer breeze. The butterfly couldn't fly. And so many other things if we were living in an environment that was whirling at the incredible speeds that they say that we are. It was just about two years ago that the Lord woke me up to the reality of the flat earth. Again, the Bible only speaks of a flat earth. There's nothing in the Bible that would ever suggest that the earth is a spinning globe. Everything talks about how the sun, the moon, and the stars revolve around us, not that we revolve around anything else. And why is that? It's because God made man in his image. You know, that is something that most people just don't grasp, including most Christians, that we are made in the image of God. That's why it's so important now to understand that we live on a flat earth. Because the deception that we live on a spinning globe and that we are one of many inhabitable planets and that there are untold numbers of aliens that might visit us all play into the end time scenario. Now it's, it's baffling to me that there are so many perceived truth seekers out there who continue to think that we are just one of many beings in this world, in this universe. You know, there's, there's a lot of people out there that constantly are putting out um, videos dealing with seeking the truth and, and many talking, for example, of trying to discern the reality of chemtrails and what are the chemtrails for? I'm thinking of people like Miles Johnston, Project Camelot, uh, Carrie Cassidy, Harold, uh, Klaus Vela. And there's many others who, when you listen to them, they there's a sense of truth about them, that they seem to be seeking the truth. And yet they seem so far afield when you really stop to analyze the things that they say. And then especially when you look at it in light of the scripture, in light of the Bible, in light of the word of God, in light of truth. One of the things that you will constantly see in people who reject the Bible and hence reject God, the Christian God, and who reject Jesus Christ you will always find lawlessness. You will always find that ultimately they will accept many of the things that God simply says are sin and abominations to him. That's one of the things you need to learn in order to discern the true from the false. But getting back to some of these people who believe that there are all of these sentient life forms 
out there. They get caught up in in thinking that there are deceptive life forms from other places, other planets, perhaps other galaxies. And then many of them hold on to some concept of a God, but yet the God is very remote and very silly when you finally get down to it. Uh, I'm thinking especially of Harold Klosfella's belief that there is this huge glob of black goo in the center of our earth that is um, Gaia or Mother Earth who possesses all knowledge. And he has even eaten something that he says is good black goo and then he talks about something that he says is bad black goo that he believes are in many of the old Gothic churches in Europe. Now, it may be true. You know, there, there evidently is something, it may be true about the black, the black goo, the bad black goo in the churches. Um, I just don't know anything about black goo except for what a few people have said. Uh, however, you know, there are some very disturbing, evil music videos out of women pretending to be sexy while they're covering themselves with some kind of a black goo. What, what is that all about? So it appears to me that there may be something that exists, that somehow this black goo is part of um, the satanic realm or the demonic realm and is somehow being used in, in these days, in these end days, coming to the forefront. And it may be that back 400, 500, 600 years ago when they built some of these massive churches in Europe that um, some people had come across this black goo and believed it was spiritual material or something. How do you... Do, you know, how can you explain the demonic gargoyles and things that you often see on the structures of the churches? You know, I, I don't know. But I do know this. I, I know that most of our history for 2,000 years, the history of the church, the history of Christianity, is a history of evil. The church has done abominable things. The church itself has become an abomination. And that, of course, is one of the reasons why I think a lot of people reject Christianity. Because where can you go and really find a, a true example of what Jesus described? A true example of the way that Christians ought to live. It's horrible to think that in the past you've had Christians killing Christians who didn't believe the way the dominant Christian believed. It's horrible when you think of so-called Christian nations coming to America, both North America and South America, and killing the indigenous populations. It's appalling when you understand that politics is just as insidious within the church as it is in the world and that it's the political ones who always rise to the top. That's why we have all of what were once Christian institutions like Harvard now being just cesspools of evil and demonic activity. The flat earth is important because I know that there is no other entity coming into my realm except for those powers and principalities that God has already told us exist. God has already told us that our warfare 
is a spiritual warfare and that we war against the principalities, that we war against the spiritual powers who rule this world. The scripture makes it very clear that that Satan remained the ruler of this world even after Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave. It's because this 2,000-year period of time has been the time when Jesus has been building his spiritual body. His spiritual body consists of those who have first believed in him and second have agreed to walk in his ways. Always remember John chapter 1 verse 12 that says to those who believed Jesus gave the right to become sons of God. You don't become a son of God automatically. You do not become a son of God just because you say Jesus rose from the dead. Just because you believe Jesus died for your sins. And yet God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yet later in the book of John, Jesus is praying for his disciples and he tells them, I'm not praying for the world. I'm praying for you. The work of saving the world has not yet begun. I know that that will surprise many of you to hear because you've thought that all of your work as a Christian has been one of evangelism and one of saving the world. But the reality is the world has not yet heard. The only people who have heard are the overcomers. The only people that are walking with God today are the overcomers. They are the ones who believe in Jesus and they are the ones who put his words into practice. They are the ones who will become the glorified sons of God who will then bring the truth, the gospel to the entire world and then the world will know. It's important to understand that God does love the world. See, we consign so many people to hell. We consign so many people to everlasting destruction. Even, men, even these that are going to take the mark of the beast, we consign them to everlasting destruction. There are going to be many people who take the mark of the beast who then become part of the cyborg, part of the artificial intelligence that is now attempting to control the earth. This AI, this artificial intelligence, is probably going to be used to create a mass event that is false, that people will literally see and believe that it's real and then make their decisions and take the mark based upon what they are seeing. I think that I think that this is going to involve the idea of aliens and it's going to be such a powerful delusion that people will simply willingly accept the mark of the beast. If you believe in flat earth, you are not likely to take that mark. You are not likely to fall for that deception. But I'm not saying at all that everyone who believes in flat earth is an overcomer. Far from it. There are many, many deceivers in the flat earth community. So flat earth is not the gospel. Flat earth is not your ticket to ride. Flat Earth is not your ticket to salvation. Flat Earth is simply something that is true. It's something that God would have us to know and then 
to live our lives according to that knowledge. Many people, I think, have come into an understanding of flat earth and then have gone on to say, wow, if this is true, then God must be real. Because when you begin to understand the firmament, then other scriptures become meaningful. You begin to say, wow. God must exist. And so if you will take that thought and begin to seek God, you will find him. He who seeks me will find me. Jesus promises us that, and that is true. One of the keys to walking with God is to realize that God only reproduces after his own kind. And that when he created the earth, he created everything to reproduce after its own kind. Read the book of Genesis chapter 2, chapter, chapters 1 and 2. You will see that in every particular instance when God created any kind of living thing, whether it was plant or animal or human, that they always reproduced after their own kind. And that when God created Adam, he made Adam in his own likeness. Now, the interesting thing about Adam is that when he created Adam, he did not create Adam with the fullness of deity in the same way that he created Jesus. It was God's plan to create a man like himself, whom he named Adam. And it was his plan that Adam would eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The reason for that is so that man would learn first what good is and what evil is, that's why it's impo so important to know the law and to understand the law and to believe that the law is a good thing. Paul teaches that in the law we have the embodiment of wisdom and of truth. Now, a lot of that truth is still hidden. We don't understand why there are certain laws. Why are there laws dealing with slavery, for example? And there's other laws that don't seem to make sense to us at this time. But we don't understand them fully because the law, like everything else, always has a spiritual meaning. So consider this video also as a introduction to the doctrine of food sacrifice to idols that Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, and then carries through the doctrine for the next several chapters. When you get to chapter 9, you see that Paul begins to take the law, specific laws from the Old Testament, and then interpret it spiritually to tell you what the meaning is now. This is showing us that the law is still relevant. And yet most of the church has declared the law and those who follow it legalistic. You have people who don't understand the law at all, some being Jews, like Harold Claus Vella, who says that the purpose of the law was really to get you to do the opposite of what the law says. Now, it's interesting that Harold is also a Jew. And he talks about that sometimes, but not a lot because Germany has laws against speaking against the Jews. And so he has to be very careful what he says because he could be arrested for being anti-Semite, even though he is a Semite, even though he is a Jew. 
We live in a strange world where you can be prosecuted for speaking the truth. Now, I get the sense from Harold that he is seeking the truth, but yet he seeks the truth through forbidden ways, through wizards, witches, necromancers, those who channel demonic spirits. And now we've come to a time where those demonic spirits are actively working with our technology and have evidently been instrumental in creating computers like quantum computers and are involved in places like CERN. All of these things are interrelated. The chemtrails, they're part of all this. Those who have really researched it, who have looked at things under a microscope and so on, says that there are nanobots, that there are electronic devices contained in the chemtrails and that we now have inhaled all of those and that those are in us. Anthony Patch, who does some excellent research with regard to artificial intelligence, quantum computers, and things like that, believes that when people take the mark of the beast, those nanobots within their bodies will be activated and that will immediately plug them into the cyborg, into the matrix, so that they will then cease to have a free will. Does that mean then that they are eternally lost at that point? I don't think so. I think at that time, though, they're going to wish that they were dead. They are going to experience hell on earth because they are literally going to be part of the satanic mind at that time. That is also going to be the time when God reveals the overcomers. That's going to be the time of the glorification. That is going to be the time when the final spiritual battle for earth, except possibly one other battle that you see at the end of Revelation chapter 20, will take place. Whose side will you be on? Are you going to examine the scriptures, read the scriptures, seek God, seek the truth? Or are you going to inquire among the wizards, the witches, and the necromancers and then be deceived by what is coming upon the earth? We've never lived in a time like this before. Things may have been like this just before the flood of Noah. But remember Jesus' words. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the day of the Son of Man. When he returns, well, that's exactly what's happening now. If you go to the book of Jasher, which is an ancient book, it was uh, published in the English language in 1840, not included in our canon of Scripture, but I believe it's chapter 6 of that book where it discusses Noah and what things were like at the time of Noah. And one of the things that they were doing at that time is that they were mixing genes. They were doing the DNA genetic modifications at that time. And that's really what they're doing now. Satan is attempting to change our DNA, to change us and make us into his son. 
rather than God's son, to make us in his image instead of God's image. What image do you want? The Bible describes the image of God as one of truth, of one of goodness, of one of righteousness, of one of love, of one of holiness, of one of purity. And how do we see Satan? What does he compel people to do? Steal and murder and lie, commit adultery, change their sex, mutilate their bodies. Compare the things of God with the things of Satan. Whose image do you want to be? And so it is important that we understand that the earth is flat. It is important to know that you do not see curvature on the earth. You can go to the other side of Lake Michigan and look toward Chicago and you will see the Chicago skyline, but it should be invisible because it should be below the curvature of the earth and it's not. You can't explain that. That one proof alone proves that we live on a flat earth. Or that we live on an earth that is many, many times bigger than what they say it is and still a globe, but I don't think that's the case. You simply don't see curvature at long distances. So I want to leave you with those thoughts. This whole idea of the flat earth does tie into the times that we live in. When we believe in the flat earth, we will not be susceptible to the alien invasion hoax. We simply won't. There will be manifestations of demons. And there will be manifestations of humans who pretend to be aliens. But we need to understand what we're seeing. We do live in a spiritual as well as a physical reality. Our warfare is against spiritual principalities and powers. And the time is coming when they are going to be able to manifest somehow. But we must discern the true from the false. We must understand what we're seeing we must continue in our hope in God that he will protect, prepare, and that he will keep us in this time that we're coming to. Remember the mountains of Israel. The mountains of Israel are going to be those overcomers that God raises up. They are going to be the cities of refuge, and that's where you flee when you have no other resource. So you need to be looking for and finding overcomers if you are not one yourself. There will be help for those who continue in faith, trust, and obedience. Father, I pray that those who have listened to this, that you will stir their hearts to understand that you will fill them with your Holy Spirit and that you will lead all of us in your ways. Amen.